April, May, and June of 2021 have a lot to offer in amateur astronomy. From meteor showers to a lunar eclipse, the planets of our solar system and deep sky objects. Regardless of the equipment that you own or the experience that you have, we're gonna take a look at the best sights in the sky this spring. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know what you're able to get out and observe or image in the comment section below. Now let's get started by taking a look at one of the most relaxing things in amateur astronomy that doesn't require any equipment at all to enjoy. Let's take a look at the best meteor showers this spring. The spring has two main meteor showers to focus on, with the first being the Lyrids, which peaks on the night of April 21st into the early morning of April 22nd. To view it, go out after midnight, face towards the east, and look for the bright star Vega. In between Vega and the Hercules constellation will be the point of the sky where the Lyrids will appear to be emanating from. While this isn't the most spectacular shower of the year, it is a reliable one and can provide views of 10 to 20 meteors per hour. However, the moon being out this year will wash out a few more of the fainter ones. Another shower this spring comes from the remnants of Halley's Comet, and it's called the Eta Aquarids Meteor Shower. Now this isn't going to be a very impressive one from where I live in the Northern Hemisphere, but for those of you that live in the Southern Hemisphere, it can be quite an impressive show. To see it, go outside on the morning of May 5th, just before sunrise, and face towards the east. To the left of Jupiter and the Moon, you will find meteors appearing to come out of the constellation Aquarius. Expect five to 10 meteors per hour from this shower in the Northern Hemisphere, especially with the moon position near them this year. But the farther south you live, the more meteors you will see, with numbers possibly reaching 20 to 30 meteors per hour. To maximize your experience with any meteor shower, I would encourage you to do three things and those involve location, comfort, and patience. First of all, find as dark of a sky as possible for where you live to maximize the number of meteors that you're gonna see. Second, take a blanket or lounge chair and find a nice open area to maximize the amount of sky that you can in the most comfortable way possible. Third, try to go out and relax. Don't feel pressed for time. Give yourself an hour or two to maximize the experience that you're gonna have enjoying this show. Sometimes the meteors will come quickly. Sometimes you'll have five, 10 or 15 minutes between them. It just depends on the peak of the shower for any given year. April, May, and June offer some wonderful opportunities to observe our closest neighbor, the moon, including a lunar eclipse for some of us. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the phases of the moon for this spring. April starts off with its new moon on the 11th and the full moon on the 26th. For May, the new moon will be on the 11th and the full moon on the 26th as well. June sees its new moon on the 10th and full moon on the 24th. Try to go out and observe the moon with binoculars or a telescope right after sunset in between its new and first quarter phases. This is gonna provide the most dynamic surface details with depths of craters and mountain ranges showing up in remarkable detail. The best dates to view the moon under these ideal conditions will be April 14th through the 19th, May 14th through the 19th, and June 12th through the 17th. To image the moon, I like to use my cell phone and an adapter that connects to my eyepieces. After adjusting the focus and camera settings, you can get some great video and pictures of the moon to share with your friends and family during any of its phases. The highlight of the moon this spring is gonna be the total lunar eclipse that occurs for some of us on the morning of May 26th. 
Sadly, where I live on the east coast of the United States, it's not going to be much of a show. But for those of you that live out in the west for North, Central, and South America, along with parts of the Pacific, it's going to be a pretty incredible sight to see. Be sure to check your local time, but in the early morning of May 26th, go outside and watch as the moon slowly becomes enveloped by the shadow of our own planet as it moves between it and the sun. The last one I saw a few years ago had the moon turn almost blood red. It's a slow process, but well worth your time to check out if you live in a region that will be able to see it. While we're on the topic of the orbits of the Earth, Moon, and Sun, I wanted to also mention a partial solar eclipse that's going to be viewable for some of us on the early morning of June 10th, just as the Sun is rising. Certain areas of Canada, Greenland, and Russia will be treated to a ring of fire eclipse where the Moon doesn't completely cover the surface of the Sun. But most of us will miss out on that spectacular sight. As always, Make sure anytime you go out to observe the sun, you're using properly certified solar glasses or a certified solar telescope. I want to make sure you're able to keep enjoying the hobby of amateur astronomy, and also, I'd like you to be able to come back and watch more of my videos. As we move farther out into our solar system, Let's begin by talking about the closest planet to the Sun, Mercury. Mercury is a difficult one to see because of its close proximity to the Sun, it barely makes it above the horizon just before sunrise or just after sunset throughout the year. But a nice opportunity to glimpse it will be around May 17th, as it reaches its highest point in the western sky right after the sun sets. You'll notice Venus just below Mercury on this night. And if we move ahead to May 28th, we will find Mercury and Venus just 0.5 degrees away from each other on this night. Through my telescope, I'll be able to get each planet in the same field of view at about 100 times magnification, which is a unique sight. Throughout the rest of May and June, Venus will continue to rise higher in the early evening sky. As we move on to Mars, it's important to remember that because we are beyond opposition, the closest point between Earth and Mars, the views aren't going to be as impressive as they were this past fall, but it's still a nice target to try to see, but temper your expectations about any type of land features or details that you're going to be able to make out this time of year. Although Mars continues to move away from us and is not at optimal viewing, there are still some nice opportunities to view it, such as when it passes by M35 on April 26th, and even more impressively, when it passes right through M44, the Beehive Cluster, on June 23rd. Unfortunately, the best views of my two favorite planets to see, Jupiter and Saturn, are not going to be until the early morning sky just a couple hours before sunrise. The positioning of them just isn't the best right now for early evening observing, and you're probably going to get your best views out of them in the upcoming summer or fall. Of particular interest are the dates of April 6th and April 7th, when the Moon will pass just underneath Saturn and Jupiter. Uranus and Neptune are also not in opportune positions to easily view this spring, with Uranus being quite close to the horizon for most of the time, and Neptune only being visible in the early morning sky along with Saturn and Jupiter. For deep sky objects, the theme of the spring is galaxy season, and we're going to start out with two of my favorites to observe throughout the entire year, Bode's Nebula, M81 and M82. These two galaxies that will show up in the same field of view of your telescope show off the beautiful difference between what we call a spiral and starburst galaxy. At plus 6.7 and plus 8 magnitude, these are two of the best galaxies to start with for those with smaller telescopes. I've spent hours observing and imaging these two galaxies and never get tired of seeing them through my telescope. From Bode's Nebula, 
We move on to M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy, and M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. These are two nice spiral galaxies as well, but they can get washed out more easily if you live in an area with moderate to heavy light pollution. Finally, we move over to the southern part of the sky to check out M104, the Sombrero Galaxy, and then the most impressive collection of galaxies in our night sky, the Virgo Cluster. This large collection of galaxies found within the constellation Virgo is a great test for your telescope and eye to see just how many galaxies you can make out from your own backyard. As with any deep sky object, the darker the skies are, the better the views are going to be. Particularly when we're talking about galaxies. Even though they're made up of billions of stars, they're faint, fuzzy objects that take up a small portion of the sky, but they are so incredible to see or image. I hope you found this video helpful on the best targets in astronomy for the spring of 2021. Please let me know of anything that I may have missed in my list or anything that you've been out to observe or image in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.